Among the small ruminant diseases, the respiratory infections are having crucial role in the economy of sheep and goat husbandry. The specific diseases which are affecting on respiratory systems and causing pneumonia. PPR is well known. In the field, you, uh, you might have getting a lot of cases of PPR. In Rajasthan, PPR is also prevalent. So it is familiar disease as the mortality is very high. Uh, this is most important disease, uh, both for sheep and goat. Another uh, disease is uh, always neglected in the field, uh, that is ovine pulmonary adenomatosis, OPA. This is chronic disease, that's why this is uh, neglected. But day by day, the economic importance of this disease is increasing because a lot of reports are there in slaughter cases, around 6 to 7 percent incidence is there. So this disease is emerging disease for India. Then you may not be heard about this enzotic nasal adenocarcinoma. This is, I think, new disease. And many people don't know about this disease. This is just similar to OIN pulmonary adeno, uh, adenomatosis, OPA. Uh, and in India, there is no comprehensive report on enzotic nasal adenocarcinoma. Then another is contagious caprine pleurodemonia. This is also a most important disease of goat. So first uh, we'll discuss about uh, PPR. There is a uh, huge mortality in PPR. So it is very important. When there is outbreak, you will get heavy mortality. Uh, sometimes it will reach to 80%, but usually it is in between uh, 10 to 20%. Along with heavy mortality, you will find high fever, there is a discharge from nostrils and severe diarrhea. So PPR is characterized by severe pneumonia and severe enteritis. This disease is reported in 1980 in GOAT and uh, after that, this PPR is everywhere. But uh, for this disease, we have vaccine developed by IVRI and it has uh, better immunity means uh, more than two years immunity. So coming to the clinical symptoms, uh, nasal discharge from nose and or discharge from eyes, uh, you'll find a lot of erosions, ulcers, and uh, the important is con congestion of alveolar border of the lip. This is uh, the case uh, in goat severe diarrhea is there, shooting diarrhea. Diarrhea is blo uh, bloody diarrhea. In Oral cavity, you will also find ulcers. Then uh, there is con uh, congestion uh, of uh, alveolar border. This is characteristic lesion. Then you will also get uh, lesions in hard palate also and soft palate. Uh, soft palate. You will find severe congestion in abomasum. And uh, in large intestine, lesions are more conspicuous. Means you will get uh, hemorrhage and congestion, streak of congestion and hemorrhages in small intestine. But uh, these are prominent in uh, large intestine and uh, this uh, region is described as zebra striping, but you will not get it always in all the cases. The pneumonia is typical type of bronchointerstitial type and in alve alveoli, you will get these intracytoplasmic inclusions in the cells, here also you can see here, here also eosinophilic in inclusion, uh, inclusions. Then in lymph node, there is a severe lymph lymphoid depletion, uh, necrosis in me mesenteric lymph nodes. This severe lymphocytic depletion is characteristic lesion of PPR. Also find inclusions in lips, then uh, lymphoid depletion in intestine, this is uh, immunohistochemistry. You can identify the antigen, uh, PPR antigen in various tissues. Uh, coming to the diagnosis, so presumptive diagnosis can be made on the clinical and pathological lesions and epidemiological findings. Then uh, virus isolation and characterization of virus. Uh, then a lot of tests are, uh, tests are there. AJID is there, CIE, FAT and a lot of tests are there. Recently, people are using PCR, specific PCR test and RT-PCR test. Also, there are a lot of ELISA developed 
for identification of PPR. Coming to the ovine pulmonary adenocarcinoma, it is previously uh, known as pulmonary adenomatosis uh, or ovine pulmonary carcinoma. Uh, and uh, it is popularly called as jacksity, means chasing sickness in Africa. Etiology is jacksity sheep retrovirus, and this virus is oncogenic and transforms the alveolar and bronchiolar epithelium into neoplasia. The species affected are primarily sheep, and uh, you will also get some cases, few cases in goats. So you are in gold find rare cases of OPA. So it is uh, widely distributed in Europe, Africa, and America, including India. If there is outbreak, first outbreak, there will be 80% case fatality rate. But uh, in subsequent years, fatality rate will be uh, decreasing and it will be around 20%. Uh, the incubation period is six months to three years. If you see clinical symptoms, generally it is occurring two to four years age of animals. Uh, there will be progressive emaciation, weight loss and uh, respiratory compromise, particularly uh, when the uh, animal uh, go fast, uh, you will find uh, the respiratory compromise, labored breathing and like that. These affected sheep always lag behind the flock and uh, you will find thin mucus discharged from the nostrils. And if the head is lowered, a copious frothy exudate may pour from the nares. Uh, this taste is called as will borrow taste. If you hold this animal like this, uh, the fluid uh, from nostrils will be there. You can collect fluid in, in a jar. So this is uh, a taste to identify OPA. If you do postmortem examination, you will uh, find that uh, these lungs are very much enlarged. Uh, these lungs do not collapse due to tumors. Uh, then frothy fluid also you can see uh, in the trachea and bronchi. Then you will find solid mass of tumors like this and some small nodules also there, white nodules. On the cut surface also you will find these small nodules. Generally, metastasis is in the nearby lymph nodes, not in other organs. So pathologically, you can find uh, the foci of adenocarcinoma. Then papillomatous, this, uh, particularly these epithelial cells of this alveoli will convert into papillomatous growth and it will occlude the lumen of alveoli. So uh, you can see these finger-like projections everywhere. Along with this, there is inflammatory response. You will find macrophages, lymphocytes, and other plasma cells. And there is no flock test for uh, this OPI identification uh, because ELISA is not available. Then virus, you cannot isolate the virus. You will diagnose the disease on the basis of clinical science, gross lesion, histopathology, and immunohistochemistry. Uh, recently, there is U3 gene, gene PCR, which is giving good results. In our laboratory, we developed this assay for diagnosis of OPA, and we conducted a study on 75 lungs, and we found that 8% sheep are affected by this OPA. In eight sheep, there are two sheep. That sheep were of three to six months of age, and did not show clinical signs or gross lesions on postmortem examination. And four adult sheep severely affected, and uh, we get characteristics lesions of OPA on gross and histopathological examination. For the diagnosis, we developed this PCR. This PCR is uh, found very sensitive, and it can detect clinical cases and also uh, subclinical cases of OPA. Next is Enzotic nasal adenocarcinoma, new, uh, you can say new disease because no comprehensive reports on this disease are in India. Previous year, we encountered uh, two outbreaks of ENA in Tong district and uh, Jaipur district. This ENA is co uh, caused by enzotic nasal tumor virus, ENTV, and it is genetically, uh, genetically related to JSRV virus. 
and there are two type of virus entv1 which cause neoplasm in sheep and entv2 which cause neoplasm in goats this uh, disease was first reported in 1980s after that uh, it is observed in some countries except australia new zealand and united kingdom in india uh, as i told there is no comprehensive report and uh, there is uh, no confirmation of entv virus from sheep or goat generally prevalence uh, is ranging from uh, 0.1% to 0.3% and uh, sometimes it is very high and it will go up to 15% and uh, no genetic sex or breed predisposition has been reported in this disease i was talking about the outbreak of this uh, ena in tong district and jaipur district so total 600 sheep were affected and uh, there was 10 to 12% mortality and morbidity was around 20% first clinical symptom is that unilateral or bilateral protrusion of eyeball then uh, these eye lesions uh, were very extensive with loss of natural reflexes and loss of vision glaucoma is there then mouth breathing frothy salivation sometimes the animal is circling and uh, there is rapid muscle de- uh, muscle wasting is there and we found that uh, the location of the tumors was in olfactory mucosa of ethmoid cartilage and uh, this growing tumor uh, compressed upon the walls of nasal cavity and protrusion of eyeball is resulted uh, here you can see uh, the pro- protrusion of eyeball unilateral protrusion of eyeball and uh, there is complete loss of vision no reflexes at all in another case you can see right eye is protruded in comparison to left eye from some sheep we also uh, collected um, the nasal discharge and uh, that discharge we stained by may grenwald jimsa stain and uh, we find that these tumor cells um, means clumps of tumor cells and on the basis of that uh, we diagnosed it as nasal carcinoma uh, we conducted some two three post mortems uh, those sheep we got uh, died in the field and we conducted the post mortem after uh, opening uh, these uh, terminate bones this nasal cavity is found occluded with tumor you can see the tumorous growth here and uh, in this ena is reported that uh, there is no metastasis in any organ only the tumors are uh, limited to the uh, terminate bones but we found that in lungs also there is tumor uh, tumorous mass you can see here this is cut surface with uh, necrotic debris and uh, bloody exudate uh, we processed these samples uh, for histopathology um, in lungs we we find the similar lesions like opa uh, this alveoli with papillomatous proliferation and infiltration of monocular cells giving adenomatous appearance similar like opa then uh, in lung uh, these uh, nasal tumors we find similar changes like lungs these uh, cases were confirmed uh, in the laboratory by gag gen pcr this pcr, PCR we uh, uh, standardized in the laboratory and uh, we identified gag gen by pcr also uh, we standardized real time pcr and uh, identify this infection then uh, coming to uh, contagious capran uh, pleuropneumonia in rajasthan i have not seen this infection much and in field also uh, there are very uh, less uh, cases of ccpp so this infection is caused by mycoplasma capriculum subspecies capri pneumonia the morbidity is 100% and sometimes mortality goes very high it is 80 to 100% and it is widely prevalent in around 40 countries and in india it is also prevalent uh, first this disease reported in algeria and it is also called as bovrida 
the disease spread by direct contact and aerosol routes. There are uh, three forms of the disease. One is per acute form, second is acute form, and the third is chronic form. In per acute form, uh, there is a sudden death within 24 to 72 hours and uh, clinical symptoms are absent. There is no clinical symptoms. But in acute form and uh, chronic form, uh, you will get uh, these re uh, respiratory symptoms and other clinical signs. The clinical symptoms are uh, anorexia, depression, dyspnea, fever, coughing, nasal discharge, lagging behind, lying down, and thoracic pain are also reported. Uh, and other signs include inspiratory dyspnea accompanied by grunting sound and snoring sound. In uh, some reports, they have given the clinical symptoms as continuous nasal discharge, which is initially serofibrinous, straw colored, uh, followed by thick mucoid or purulent and rust colored might be observed. Here you can see the severe nasal discharge. Then uh, this pleura is thickened, and always there is unilateral consolidation of the lungs. This one side lung is not affected, but other side is heavily affected, enlarged with thickened pleura. And uh, on the cut surface, you can find the typical picture like marbling. Uh, in microscopic lesions, you will find septal peribronchular fibrosis in 80 to 82%. Then uh, fibrinous pleuritis in 64%. Then peribronchular cuffing of inflammatory mononuclear cells, 55%. And uh, in the pneumonia, the macrophages are the main cells followed by neutrophils along with few pulmonary fibrin deposits. This uh, pneumonia is typically bronchointestinal pneumonia with empyzema and atelectasis of alveoli, then thickening of interlobular septa, then proteinous material deposition alveoli, which is a characteristic of CCPP. Here you can see the proteinaceous material. This is characteristic of CCPP. So thickened interlobular septa and a lot of inflammatory cells are there. Then diagnosis of this disease can be done by clinical signs, gross and histopathology. And uh, you can isolate organism, uh, but the isolation is very difficult because uh, this is a somewhat fastidious organism and require special uh, grow, growth media and special facility should be there for isolation of uh, mycoplasma. So somewhat uh, difficult to is isolate, but uh, this is gold standard method to confirm the disease. But uh, you can diagnose this disease by ELISA, FAT, CFT, and indirect hemagglutination test. Nowadays, uh, this PCR test is very uh, popular and uh, C-ELISA is al also popular. So thank you very much.